Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the errors that can creep into our measurements, essentially time and range measurements between the SV and the receiver. Well, let's look at those in a little bit more detail. So first of all, we have to realize that the satellites are moving quite fast. They're moving in orbit at almost four kilometers per second, which is two and a half miles per second. So when a signal is sent from, a from the satellite to the receiver. After it's sent, by the time the signal reaches the receiver, the SV, the satellite, will have moved about 300 meters. Not only that, we also have to take into account the satellite clock offset because the time of the clock on the satellite, which is relatively accurate because it uses atomic clocks, which are very good quality, so their offset is very, very small, but that compared to the receiver clock offset, well, that is going to be huge because the receiver clocks are not very accurate and they drift quite a bit and also they can be wrong in many other aspects and we'll get into the details of that as well. The difference in the finding the correct range can be as much as 300 kilometers. So really matching up the time between the receiver and the satellite is absolutely essential. Otherwise, you'll have horrendous accuracy on GPS. We also have to worry about the relativistic offsets. Now we can take care of those clock offsets quite well. We can get them zoomed in very, very closely so that that's no longer a problem. But then we also have to begin to take care of the relativistic offsets. The fact that the satellites are moving quite fast and even though it's a very small fraction of the speed of light, it's sufficient to offset the timing of the clocks as well. So we have to adjust for the speed of the satellite the relativistic speed, and also for the gravitational force difference between the receiver on the Earth and the satellite in orbit. So there's differences in the clock speed due to the speed of the satellite and due to the fact the satellite is away, farther away from the gravitational force of the Earth than the receiver is, and so there's a time difference there as well. We also have to worry about the instrument delays. Obviously, nothing works perfectly at a zero time difference. Whenever signals go through the electronics of both the satellite and the receiver, there are some time delays there as well that need to be taken into account. We also have the signal traveling through the ionosphere. There will be ionospheric delays and those depend upon the conditions of the ionosphere, which can, be, which can cause anywhere from a 2 to 50 meter change in the calculation of the range. And we also have to worry about the tropospheric delays, again depending upon what the weather is like, where we can have changes in the delay in such a way that the difference in the range calculation can be as much as 2 to 20 meters. We've already talked about the receiver clock offset, and then finally, of course, we still have the receiver instrument delay there as well. So we have delays in the instrumentation of the satellite and delays in the instrumentation of the receiver. So you can see a lot of things have to be accounted for. We have to know the exact time difference between when a signal was sent to where a signal was received, and from that we have to find the exact position of the satellite, which then in turn gives us the exact position of the receiver. Wow, it is actually quite complicated and we'll go ahead and start explaining to you point by point of how this is done. Uh, next we're going to look at that calculation of the range equation where we then have an equation that takes all those various aspects into account. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to adjust for the range using these various offsets. So stay tuned and we'll show how to do that. How to do that. 